While Ford and Jeep are touting 400 plus horsepower versions of their most extreme off-roaders, Land Rover's like, yeah, big deal. Wouldn't you rather a 518 horsepower supercharged engine? Well, that's exactly what they're giving you here in the new Defender V8, a six-figure SUV designed with a more dynamic side. Bronco Raptor, Wrangler 392, Regardless of engine, I've fallen hard for this Defender since its rebirth a couple of years ago, making it my pick in this resuscitated segment. The Lego-esque styling, the amalgam of toughness and boutique milieu, the Defender is indisputably cool. Plus, Land Rover's accessory page plays like a Christmas catalog for grown-ups with so many fun choices. And with a starting MSRP of $54,850, it's not unreasonably priced. But that's if you choose a four-door four-cylinder model. For some, that's just not good enough, and neither is the Turbo 6. Nope, the highest level of prestige and exclusivity lies with a 5.0 under the hood. Now, do you need 518 horsepower and 461 pound-feet of torque? Of course not. The three-liter Ingenium inline-six is a brilliant engine that doesn't disappoint whether on the road or on the trail. So the Defender V8 is a tale of wanton excess, with its trump cards being a 0-60 time of 4.9 seconds and a sonorous exhaust note from the supercharged powertrain. And with it comes some needed modifications to harness its additional weight and dynamic capabilities. Unique suspension tuning, modified gearing for the 8-speed, larger anti-roll bars to reduce body sway, a rear differential with additional yaw control, and a new dynamic setting within the Terrain Response 2 system that amps up this Defender with the usual sport mode tweaks to throttle response and suspension stiffness. And how about that V8 sound played through quad tailpipes? But other than the exhaust and 22-inch wheels, there's not much visual distinction for the V8. It would have been cool if Land Rover had gussied it up a bit more. This Yulong White is one of three available V8 colors and comes with a contrasting black roof. Its appearance is stubby, yet sexy in a four-wheel drive kind of way. And depending upon how high the air springs are jacked, the Defender can take on the stance of a Tonka truck with up to 11 and a half inches of ground clearance. My previous Defender test drives of both the 90 and 110 wheelbases came with the mild hybrid Turbo 6, a fantastic engine that's both powerful and relatively fuel efficient, which is why this V8 model seems like it is completely overkill, which is exactly what some rich dude wants, right? The model that no one else has at any cost. And it's exactly the cost of this model that troubles me the most with a starting MSRP of $110,000 it's priced at $20,000 more than the 395 horsepower Defender X, and this one carries a miserable 16 MPG fuel economy rating. But logic often doesn't play a role when you're solely fixated on having the top of the line. Without the optional off-road tires, and because I've already taken the Defender deep into the mud and water, I'm spending more time on the tarmac this week, and isn't that truly where this V8 will likely reside? But don't worry, this one still has all the go-anywhere capabilities, all the electronic tricks, and all of the off-road goodies. Even on these all-season Contis, which were developed specifically for Defender, wet grass, gravel, and mud are all very much in play. The added V8 power is nicely corralled by the multitude of off-road programs that tailor the vehicle to what lies underneath, including a setting that will automatically choose the best setup for you. The 4x4 programs and the information they feed to the driver are really impressive, including critical camera views of your surroundings. The head-up display also goes into off-road mode with an inclinometer right in your line of view. And in typical Land Rover fashion, the Defender is vault-like quiet, pampering of its occupants, and extremely confident in its capabilities. It's that feeling of seclusion and invincibility from behind the wheel that drivers will love about the Defender, V8 or not. On road, it's a bit of a different story. The short wheelbase, high center of gravity design doesn't exactly lend itself to Range Rover sport maneuvers. 
Even hunkered down in dynamic mode, the Defender V8 lacks the level of body control needed to make sporty driving truly fun. Instead, it muscles its way around, relying on the V8's brawn to overcome natural physics. There's big power here that's always on tap in paddle shifters that allow you to ring out the V8 soundtrack, but this is not a sporty SUV in the vein of a similarly priced Porsche Cayenne GTS. This is an adventure vehicle with a big engine. It doesn't embarrass itself on the back roads, but its true purpose is clearly evident. The Defender is now available in three flavors. The 90, which is this two-door, the 110, which is the traditional four-door, and now there's the 130, which is a three-row Defender. So this Land Rover family is definitely growing. But this two-door V8 model is going to be a rare sight. It's pretty much an oddball. As compared with my previous two-door test drive, this one foregoes the frivolous front jump seat, making this arrangement much more practical. The rear is accessed via one-touch power sliding seats on both sides, so it's fairly easy to get back there and feels surprisingly spacious once you are. An abundant greenhouse with windows all around also keeps it from feeling like a cave, and passengers also get their own climate controls. But the 90s cargo area is definitely compromised, both in its size and its cut, so carrying lots of gear, at least back here, isn't in the cards. Moreover, you can forget about the roof ladder, roof rack, or roof box, or even that cool side-mounted gear carrier. The dynamic capability of this V8 model prohibits attaching anything up there, a huge consideration when choosing this Defender. There are controls for lowering the air springs, however, so loading this tall SUV isn't a struggle. Towing is rated at about 7,700 pounds. The suede-covered steering wheel and leather seats with suede inserts add to the sporty vibe. There's wireless phone projection for the PIVI Pro infotainment system, much better than Land Rover's previous screen, but still not the most user-friendly IT. A refrigerated center console, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, and a driver information display that's a little half-baked in terms of configurability and the way in which these plastic buttons work. At $110,260 as tested and rated at 15 MPG City, the Defender 90 V8 is a little hard to embrace when a well-equipped six-cylinder, more usable Defender 110 can be had for tens of thousands of dollars less. For TestDriveNow.com, I'm Steve Hammes.